supracondylar fracture of the humerus in children. The age is between 4 to 10, caused by a fall in outstretched hand. The majority of the fractures are extension type. Type 3 is displaced fracture and it carries a high incidence of neurovascular deficit and compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome may not develop right away. It may take hours to develop. The physician should not confuse compartment syndrome with the arterial injury. You can have arterial injury and compartment syndrome or compartment syndrome without arterial injury. And in this case, you will need fasciotomy to release the compartment syndrome. The anterior interosseous nerve is involved in the extension type injury. The patient cannot do the OK sign. So if you have an extension type injury and you find out that the patient has an ulnar nerve palsy after surgery, it's probably not from the extension type injury. It's probably from the medial pin that may have affected the ulnar nerve. In the flexion type, the ulnar nerve injury is more common. Classification, type one non-displaced, type two angulated with intact posterior cortex, type three displaced. Treatment, type 1, immobilize, type 2 and type 3, close reduction and percutaneous pinning. If you can't get it correct, do open reduction. You put two or three lateral pins. If you need a medial pin, be careful about the position of the ulnar nerve. Use open incision to introduce the medial pin and have the elbow in extension, not in flexion when you put the medial pin because that will relax the ulnar nerve. When you use the pins, do diversion pins. The cross pins configuration, median and lateral pins, gives the maximum rotatory stability. The crossing should be approximately 2 cm proximal to the fracture. Normally, we use two divergent lateral pins and add a third pin would increase the stiffness in case of medial comminution. Avoid malposition of the fragments because it can lead to malunion and the cubitus varus. Very rarely, you may have to do corrective osteotomy for the cubitus varus. It's only a cosmetic problem, not a functional problem. If you have a pulseless pink hand or pulseless white hand, there is decreased perfusion. You will need to do emergent close reduction and pinning. If you can't do the close reduction, you will do open reduction and pinning. After this, the hand is pink and warm, then you observe. Observe for capillary refill, for temperature, for color, with the elbow in some flexion, but not hyperflexion. If after the close reduction and the pinning, the hand continue to be white and cold. You will do exploration of the artery. Pulseless white from the beginning. You reduce it and you pin it, continue to be white. Then you need to explore and repair the artery. You repair the artery through an anterior approach and you will do fasciotomy after that. If the circulation was good, but after reduction and fixation, you have a pulseless white hand, then you need to unreduce the fracture fixation. When you have a nerve injury, observe the patient. Don't explore the nerve. The recovery will start in about 6 to 12 weeks, and the majority are completed in 4-5 or five months. Don't explore the nerve in closed fractures. 
What if the patient had an unknown nerve palsy after surgery and he didn't have that before surgery? Then remove the medial pen and observe. The anterior humeral line. The anterior humeral line should intersect the middle third of the capitellum in children more than five years old and touches the capitellum in children less than five years old. So you want to maintain this relationship between the anterior humeral line and the capitellum. And look what happens here. The capitellum moves posteriorly in extension type injury and anteriorly in flexion type injury. You remove pens at three weeks. You allow gentle range of motion. You don't need routine physiotherapy. The stiffness usually resolves in about six months. When do you do the reduction and the fixation? When the hand is well perfused, pink and warm, then you can wait overnight to do the reduction in the morning. The urgent ones that they cannot wait are the open fractures, the ones with neurovascular deficit or floating elbow or impending compartment syndrome. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.